The Immortal Hulk, Issue Number 14 Love Never Dies a Natural Death His third gravestone was at West Point. The first was at the family plot in New Hampshire. That funeral had been a chaotic affair. The body had already been stolen. The few who attended were distracted by their own private dramas. It was quickly forgotten, but the stone remained. The second had been at Arlington, until it was quietly removed. A more prestigious ceremony, flowery speeches by the great and costumed, and all a lie, a show for unseen enemies, a game of plot and counterplot. To bury him there again would be an embarrassment. He was a traitor, after all. He'd conspired with America's enemies, and more than once. But he died an ex-Avenger, a servant of government, an establishment figure, pardoned and forgiven, worthy of a hero's grave among his peers, hence West Point. Betty wondered which one they really thought they were burying that day, the hero, the monster, or was he both? There were speeches again, not as many as last time. This was a much smaller, tighter ceremony, invitees only. Once again, Steve Rogers wasn't there. General Ross was a, a complicated man. In his place, Tony Stark represented the costumed heroes her father had worked with. His eyes kept flicking to the coffin, as if something might burst out of it at any moment. Twice bitten, three times shy. Had our differences, but he, uh, will be remembered as an Avenger in good. But then, death wasn't what it used to be. All I have prepared, I'm afraid. Uh, would, uh, anyone else like to speak? Betty knew that better than most. Anyone? Actually, I have something to say. Reginald Fourteen. I worked with the General for many years back at Project Greenskin, or Gamma Base as it became known. I knew him well. In many ways, he was a father to me. General Thaddeus Ross taught me many things. To carry myself with authority, to have confidence in my abilities, to assert myself when the world seemed against me, and most of all, he taught me to stand against monsters. There can be no quarter with those forces of chaos that wish to upend the status quo. There can be no harboring of them in our homes, or in our hearts. No consorting with the enemy. Little present from our friends in government. The last remains of, uh, what are we calling him now? Subject B? The context said we shouldn't reach out to him again, though. I'm not surprised. That thing with Stearns and Cortez cost us a lot of goodwill. Besides, the whole point of Shadow Base moving to the secondary sites was to sever ties, maximize deniability. How much is in there? Looks about a hundred pounds. Not much. Well, apparently the rest of it is orbiting Jupiter after the last attempt to rebuild him. Still, even that much should be enough to jumpstart things. The hard part, well, that's what it always is. Looking at ourselves in the mirror. Hast thou an arm like God? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. They shouldn't do that. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. They shouldn't have it out in the rain like that. Doesn't he know? You know that guy, Betty? We've met. Oof, Carol's gonna be pissed she wasn't invited. I think she wanted to talk to Fourteen about, uh, well, that whole business with Bruce. Hmm. Betty, I know this isn't the best time, but we're on your side, okay? What happened in Iowa was a mess, but if Bruce had just kept his head, we could have worked it out. The Avengers aren't the bad guys here. 
Look, we're on the outs with the government ourselves right now. We only want what's best. Bruce can't run forever, not even with the Hulk on his side. He needs to come in. Hmm. Can I give you a ride home at least? I've got a plane at LaGuardia that actually turns into a robot. I call it the Stark Scream. You've also got a flying death ray that blew up a town, Mr. Stark. I'll fly coach. Betty flew coach. It gave her a few hours to think over the 14 situation. Obviously, he knew about Bruce's phone call. There weren't any bugs in the house. She checked, and her line was clean, which meant he had other methods. They'd fought back when she was Red She-Hulk. Obviously, he bore a grudge. And he'd had a close relationship with her father, and she hadn't. Not really. The last time she ever saw his face was through prison glass. He'd call her sometimes from the White House. Come visit before I'm in jail again, he'd say. But she never did. And now he was dead. And she just couldn't make it seem real. He'd been dead before, after all. So had she, and so had her husband. Bruce... Betty, I'm... I'm sorry about your father. And I'm sorry it took so long to call. He said as if that made it okay. And so long to actually get here. You wouldn't believe what I've been through since we talked on the... For months she'd thought he was dead. Really dead. Months of sightings and false hopes and grief. And he'd let her go on thinking that. He'd let her... Part of her wanted to slap him. We're not safe. Get inside the house. Good news and bad news, General. I've reached the location the Monitor team specified, and I'm in position. But there's no clear shot. Permission to put one through Mrs. Banner's back and finish this. That's a negative, Agent Burbank. I buried her father today, Burbank. That man meant a great deal to me. I won't send his daughter to join him unless I have to. I thought friends of the Hulk were enemy collaborators, General. You weren't there. You didn't see where that monster took us. Request denied, I said. Monitor 5, sync to my screen. I want to see and hear everything. Monitor 5. General, we... we have a problem. Betty had taken precautions. She already had one of her old uniforms on under her clothes. They were bulletproof. It seemed practical. And she'd signaled a friend to come over. Bruce wouldn't take it well, she knew. But there was safety in numbers. Finally, she'd activated the statue. It's consecrated to Icon. Blocks all psychics and remote viewers. A little leftover from my time with the Order of the Shield. I save it for when I need it. That's that secret society you run with, isn't it? The ones who ordered my death? Ran. Past tense. The Order doesn't return my calls now that I'm only human. And you managed to plan your own death without any help. Only it didn't take, did it? Betty, I cried over you, Bruce. I didn't cry over my father, but I cried over you. I wonder, was that because I thought you were dead? Or because I knew you were alive? Got him on a thermal imaging, General. Hard to tell who's who. Still, 50-50 chance of the monster who took me into hell. Agent Burbank, do not fire. Betty, I... I know. I know I should have called someone, but I... I wasn't ready. It's like I knew that in my gut I couldn't face it. I've learned to trust feelings like that. They protect me. But something happened before I called you, and it just... It broke me open, Betty. Tore me in half. I didn't have my protection anymore, and everything I'd been numbing, it just... Rick Jones is dead, and he didn't come back. He's gone. I can't believe Rick's really gone. You really should believe it, Bruce, she thought. Because the Hawk met up with the scum who killed him and joined their team. Want to tell me what that was about? But she only thought it. Hmm. He'd cheated on her, broken her heart and her life a dozen ways, and when she'd become his equal, the Red She-Hulk, he'd taken that away too, for her own good. 
Him and Rick. Even that was tainted. Nip dip do. Cat's got the flu. But still, there he stood. An open wound in the shape of a man. Dog's got the chicken pox. A beaten dog, and she just couldn't do it. She could never do it. Never hurt him, even with the truth. Agent Burbank, stand down now. That is an order. The sun's gone down. Her father had called him a milksop. She'd loved that vulnerability. But now it seemed somehow as managed as the rage that smashed cities and left no body count. Betty, I really am so sorry. As carefully calculated, so out goes you. In that moment, she knew why her father had hated him. And in that one moment, she hated him more. Bruce, I'm sorry. But I... <coughs> Whoops, General. I hit the wrong one. I can take him. It'll be a rush. Swapping out for the thousand cal. Stand by. Yeah, yeah. Come on, I can take you, you green freak. It'll be a rush. You're going back to hell tonight. Remember the protocol. Stun and run. I can take him. It's night, you damned fool. Were you asleep during retraining? Unless the sun's up, he doesn't die. None of them die. I can take him. It'll be a rush. It'll be a... At ease, soldier. I've got it from here. Betty called, Bruce. She said you might be in trouble. Now, you've obviously had a setback, but if you can try to stay calm, we'll all get through this. Trust me, I'm your doctor. Try to stay calm. <laughs>